here's why evolution keeps turning animals into crabs. Did you know there are over 6,700 species of crabs spread across the oceans, freshwater, and even on land? That's a lot of crabs, right? But have you ever wondered why there are so many species of this animal? This is matter. And this is why evolution keeps turning animals into crabs. About 10 million years ago, reaching back to the Eocene, a creature with claws traveled by the Pacific Ocean on the landmass that was to become New Zealand, looking for food. This creature was a hermit crab, like the ancestors of modern-day king crabs, also known to scientists as Paralomus debodiarum. It had a sharp and hard shell and a round body about the size of a baseball. Based on how many modern king crabs live, scientists think that Paralomus probably lived in very deep, cold water regions. But no matter how Paralomus decided to spend its days, scientists agree that if you saw one today, you'd probably recognize it as just an ordinary looking crab, even though they're not really crabs at all. Kind of confusing, right? Paralomus and its modern counterparts belong to an infraorder known as Anumura, a taxonomic rank of decapod crustaceans, including hermit crabs and others. They all evolved from crustaceans that were longer and had tails with a body that actually looked more like a lobster. And then, for some odd reason, these creatures evolved into things that looked like modern-day Instagram crabs you'd see on fancy islands while scrolling through your feed. <laughs> hey, while we're on that topic, you might as well just follow us on Instagram. Just type in matter with three T's. Anyways, fake crabs. Why does this keep happening? What is it about the crab's form that makes it so evolutionarily successful? Well, it turns out it's all about flexibility. It sounds odd if you think about it. I know, considering the fact that these animals have hard and thick shells, but flexibility is the key. These crab-like creatures date back to the Devonian period, about 365 million years ago, when many tropical marine species went extinct. And it all started with the first decapod crustaceans, like Paleopalemon, the first Devonian decapod crustacean. Decapods are named for their 10 feet, and their order includes things like shrimp, crawfish, lobsters, and crabs. Paleopalemon is the oldest lobster-like decapod ever discovered, and it probably lived on the ocean floor, just like modern lobsters do. But then, around 260 million years ago, something happened. Decapods split into two groups, the Anomurans, or the fake crabs, and the Brachyurans, the true crabs. The oldest true crab is Eoprosopon, a crustacean that lived 185 million years ago when dinosaurs still roamed Earth. And because it has some unusual crab-like traits, like a slightly bigger tummy, scientists argued whether it actually belonged in the crab family at all. But over the course of evolutionary time, both the Anumurons and the Brachyurons looked more and more like what we think of as the crab shape that we all know today. A crustacean started out with an elongated body similar to a lobster, only to evolve into the rounder, flatter shape of a modern crab. Scientists are puzzled and still wondering why this has been happening for more than a hundred years. 
But in 1916, zoologist Alexander Boria Daly recognized this process and named it carcinization, which means to become crab-like. He described how he thought the process happened. Basically, the long tail of a lobster grows shorter over time and gets tucked under the body and the narrow front part of the lobster grows wider and flatter until it eventually winds up looking like what we'd call a crab. So how does carcinization happen? Well, that part is pretty simple. Animals that live in similar environments face obstacles that can move them all towards the same evolutionary advantages. A recent study found that this phenomenon really took off during the Cretaceous period, which scientists sometimes call the Cretaceous Crab Revolution. Freaking Crab Revolution! And about 80% of the major groups of true crabs that we know of today originated during this period. And throughout this time, there was a long-term shift in changes toward more crab-shaped species, specifically toward true crabs and away from long-bodied ones. The crab-like creatures also seem to have inhabited many more environments than their more lobstery relatives. Another possible explanation for their change of shape is that it allowed them to move freely and the rounder, flatter shape of crabs lets them run, burrow, and swim more comfortably with their new form. One theory says that the change to a crab shape was a way for organisms to better avoid predators like octopus and turtles. By losing the long tail, they had one less delicious part that predators might grab onto. Today's adult true crabs typically have wide, egg-shaped bodies and their eyes are mounted on stalks. Crabs that burrow or swim, such as blue crabs, might have flattened or like pairs of hind legs. By the way, did you know that the largest crab in the world is the giant Japanese spider crab? which can measure up to 13 feet across. It's so massive, they look like something from a 1950s sci-fi film. And speaking of the largest crab in the world, did you know that the Titanoboa was the largest snake that ever existed in time? Our Titanoboa video will freaking blow your mind, but we'll save that for another episode of Matter. Did you have fun learning something random just now? Well, be sure to tune in next time for more amazing stories from Matter. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new video updates whenever we upload every Wednesday and Sunday. We might not be the biggest channel around, but I guarantee we care about our subscribers more than anyone around. Drop us a comment and watch how quickly we reply. Until next time, friends.